All right, folks, um, we've, we've covered quite a bit of material um, in the, the previous well distortion videos. And what I want to talk about today really is, is why uh, it works. Why does well distortion uh, occur? Um, why do the mechanisms for preventing it actually work? But the first thing we need to understand is really why does the distortion occur in the first place? Well, the first aspect to that is just recognizing that metals expand. And the expansion can actually be quite dramatic. Um, we're going to take a look at that right now. Um, what I have is I have a piece of aluminum flat bar here on the table. <clears throat> on one end, uh, you can see this in the, uh, the close-up shot, I have two pieces of material. Uh, one bar is just right here as a reference point for where the end of that material uh, was, and the other piece is adjacent to it. What will happen when this gets longer is this will grow, and when it grows, it'll push this bar uh, here out of the way. And of course, this one will still be in its place, so we can kind of see the change in growth. Um, the opposite end is clamped to the table with a C-clamp. This bar is aluminum, so it's going to expand a lot more than steel would. Um, it's about double. Okay? Aluminum has a coefficient of expansion of about 13 and a half millionths of an inch per inch of length per degree Fahrenheit. So if we were able to carefully measure the amount that this gets longer, we could reverse engineer what the average temperature was down the length of it. But I'm just going to wave a torch over this and we're going to watch this grow. So the first real thing to recognize is that materials move a lot with heat. Now steel won't grow as much, um, but we're going to talk about expansion of all materials and we'll actually look at some different materials during this video. So to start with, let's just warm this up and we'll watch on the close-up camera what actually happens. mark right here. Um, this has pushed this out a significant amount. Now this is going to shrink back to its original length um, as it cools. So the first problem that we're going to encounter with welding any material is that the material is going to want to get longer. We can see with the aluminum that the change in length was dramatic. Um, if we were welding something made out of aluminum, um, you know, the weld itself is molten, so it's, it's over 1,200 degrees. 
but that doesn't mean the entire part is hot. In this case, I heated a long bar and I saw a significant amount of length change without a significant amount of temperature. It's really only a few hundred degrees. Uh, an aluminum pot on, on a stove would, would end up right around 200. You know, the boiling temperature of water uh, maybe slightly uh, uh, cooler at the top than at the bottom. It, it doesn't radiate heat very efficiently. But again, that change in, in length is going to cause a change in volume uh, for that pot. So in this case, the change in length that we saw also occurred across the width of the bar, although it was harder to measure. It occurred across the thickness of the bar as well. Uh, if I take a scale, machinist sc scale here, and I just estimate, uh, even at the end of the bar, I know this pushed, it's a little bit crooked, but it appears that I have somewhere in the range of three quarters of an inch of growth. Okay, That growth, whether it's a significant like this or small on a smaller part is what's going to cause permanent weld distortion and we'll get more into that next all right folks so uh, it's been about 20 minutes or so this bar is still ever so slightly warm to the touch it, it's not cool like the, the surrounding material is uh, but it has basically returned to its original length. Uh, if I take the uh, tape measure and measure the length of this, we were at 81 and 3 quarters of an inch before I ground the end. Um, right now it is just a, like a, the width of the line on the tape measure is longer than that. Um, so if we take a piece of material uh, again and we heat it up, it's going to grow. Okay? And that, that's the basic uh, mechanism for distortion. Now, I've got two bars right here. Uh, these two bars are, they're just steel. Uh, they're, they look like stainless, they're shiny, but they've been ground. Uh, so they're a very nice, uh, even diameter. They're nominally three quarters of an inch, and they're measuring right now with my calipers uh, 0.748. So 750 would be exactly three quarters. Uh, but they're measuring around 748 thousandths each. The, the idea here is that if I heat this bar up, as I did with the aluminum, and allow it to grow, um, and that bar is heated uniformly, and, I, and it wasn't perfectly uniform, there was spots that were hotter and spots that were colder, but you know, the best I can do. Um, that bar will go back to its original measurements, okay? We, we warm it up and we cool it off again uniformly. This bar has, for all practical intents and purposes, returned to its original size. And that's because the bar was, was not restricted. Uh, it was allowed to grow. I, I pinned it at one end, but the other end was free to grow. So the bar just grew longer and then of course it got shorter. Um, this is why we have expansion joints on bridges, okay? Uh, bridges in the summer uh, are a lot longer than they are in, in the winter. And if you go uh, walking across the bridge and you look for that finger groove joint, that expansion joint, usually it's near uh, the, the ends, one end or another. You, sometimes you find an intermediate if it's a really, really long bridge. But if you look at those expansion joints in the winter, uh, the gaps, in this case, between my fingertips and, and the, the groove here are actually quite large because the bridge is shrunk. Uh, and then in the summertime, the, gr the bridge grows. One end, of course, is attached to the land, so the growth is really mostly in the middle section, but that joint will uh, close right up. And, and if you didn't have that, you would have buckling of the bridge. So we're going to do two things. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bar, I'm going to clamp both ends, I'm going to warm it back up, and we're going to watch the bar grow up off the bench. Uh, at the same time, I'm going to take these two bars and I'm going to heat them. The first bar, again, we're going to heat up uh, glowing orange, so we're going to get this nice and red, at least in the middle, and uh, we're going to allow it to expand and we're going to allow it to cool. We're going to measure it again once it's cooled down. This bar is going to be placed in the vise. Okay. Now the idea being is that the vise will prevent this bar from getting longer. Okay. This aluminum bar was allowed freely to grow. 
And this short bar will not be allowed to grow. The vise will restrict that growth. The volumetric growth, okay, not the linear growth, because remember this got longer, it got wider, and it got thicker. So there was an increase in volume, okay? That volumetric growth of this bar will still occur. But since it can't get longer, it has to get fatter, okay? The diameter will increase. When it cools off, there's nothing preventing it from getting shorter. The vise is holding it this way, but it's not gripping it. It's not preventing it from getting shorter. So the volume growth that occurred will then unoccur, if you will. It'll shrink. There'll be a reduction in volume. The volume will go back to what it was originally, but since the bar never was able to get longer, the bar will shrink in all directions because it's not prevented. I'm not pulling it, right? I'm not preventing it from getting shorter. The volume growth will, will, will cool back down and the result will be the bar will get shorter than it was originally and it will actually fall out of the vise, okay? Um, when I get done, I will discover that the bar will be thicker in the middle than it was and the overall length will be shorter. So again, this bar was 5.536. Uh, long, this was 5.522. So I'm going to get the torches out, I'm going to heat these up right now. Alright, so we've got the aluminum bar uh, now, the same bar we had before, it's clamped down. I'm only clamping it at the ends. Um, so we're going to see the effect of distortion on a long part. We should see this bar rise up off the deck. Uh, there should be a significant uh, increase in uh, <clears throat> curvature of this bar. Now, if this bar was, uh, you know, tack welded uh, intermediately, maybe restrained here, restrained here, we would see a waviness effect to it. Uh, that effect is going to cause uh, temporary distortion, which some of which will become permanent. Okay. So I'm going to fire off the little torch. perfectly rigid, but the natural growth that would have occurred did not occur. So when I took the heat away, the bar shrunk and the volume change uh, was equal in all directions because there was nothing holding it from getting shorter. So again, that bar should be shorter and fatter when it's all done. This bar should go back basically to its original length. And with a short section, uh, we can actually get compression along that bar. Now, if we had a long section, we would not expect it to compress shorter. We would expect it to buckle, it would kick out. This section here, being long and held at the ends, is basically going to kick out sideways uh, in a buckling mechanism. 
So I'm going to go ahead and fire this thing. And then we wait. All right, so here we go. We're going to uh, warm this up. After I move the calculator. There it goes, folks. It doesn't take a whole heck of a lot of heat to get a wound in the grub. So the change in length that we have here is the result of the bar trying to get longer, but it can't because it's held at the end. So the length change is going to go someplace to so it curves up. And the short bar that we put in the vise wasn't about to buckle uh, and, and, and flip out sideways. So all of that length change occurs in compression. I guess that's good enough. That uh, definitely proves the point. I can, I can put my hand under here. I can't quite get a fist there. But again, that will continue to drop as it comes off. And again, it, it will go back to approximately its original length. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be some permanent deformation here because this was not freely allowed to just grow longer. Um, and even on the other one, there was a little bit of permanent deformation because I heated the bar only from one side. So the top of the bar got hotter than the bottom of the bar. So there's going to be some permanent curvature uh, regardless, okay? There's always going to be some distortion. The trick is, do we have a mechanism to control it? So what we do now basically is we wait. And when these have cooled down to room temperature, we'll come back. Uh, all right, folks, it's, it's been a half hour or so since we shut the torches off. Uh, this bar is still slightly above the table. Um, it's, it's actually cool to the touch. I would imagine at this point the, the, the deformation that's here, uh, I can't get my little pinky finger underneath of it, um, but it's, it's still elevated. Uh, it's, it's up off the table, you know, and I didn't measure this before, but you know, approximately three eighths of an inch at the high point. <clears throat> and it was relatively uniformly flat. So we restricted the change in growth over the length, but we allowed it really a lot of flexibility to move, as you saw. And we have what I would say at this stage of the game is permanent deformation. That's cool. Uh, the bars, this bar over here is the bar that uh, was in the vise. It's got epoxy stuck all to it um, from hitting the floor. Um, this bar is, uh, now slightly lukewarm to the touch uh, but again that's not going to really cause anything significant uh, really maybe not even measurable with the calipers um, the original length was 5.536 and right now this bar is measuring 5.461 okay so we were at uh, 536 we're now at 461, so we've got uh, 39 and 36. Looks like we've got uh, 75 thousandths of an inch that this thing has shrunk. Um, so that's, you know, doesn't sound significant, but again, 75 thousandths of an inch is, uh, is, is gonna cause a tremendous amount of weld distortion uh, over a, a relatively small distance. And uh, this, in this case, was enough to have the part fall clean out of the vise. Uh, the vise hasn't been touched, and again, if I, I place this in here, uh, this now can move around. Uh, this was tight in the vise, so the vise itself probably expanded a little bit uh, before, but it's definitely just passing through. Uh, the vice without any, any difficulty. And again, it was clamped in there tight before. So that part shrunk 75 thousandths. Uh, this part, if I've done the math right, this part right here was at 5.522, 
this was not allowed to uh, really be restricted. We just set it on the bench and heated it up and let it cool down. And right now we're running 5. Point, get this thing to settle down here. 5.525. So this is actually three thousandths of an inch uh, longer than that. So, you know, for reference, um, a sixteenth of an inch is 62 thousandths. This grew 75. Uh, it's a little more than a sixteenth of an inch, not quite as much as a 332nd welding electrode. And this bar grew three thousandths, which I'm guessing if I could you know, pluck a little hair out of my head, I don't have much, and, and, and measure one of those hairs, uh, it's probably three or four thousandths of an inch in diameter. The other thing that we haven't taken into account for here is while this has gotten shorter, it's now thicker. So the end of this, where I didn't heat it, is still 0 0.7480 inches, okay? And I'll try to uh, get this on the camera. I don't know if the camera can pick that up. Uh, so that, that's running anywhere right there, 748 now that I settled the uh, caliper down, okay? Uh, the middle section is running at, I have 764, okay? Roughly, it depends on how I roll it. Right now I've got 763.5, okay? So the middle section actually grew by about 16 thousandths of an inch. So where did the length go? Well, it went right to the midsection, okay? It actually got thicker. And you can set these beside one another and see the rocking mechanism. I'm done. All right, the last thing that we're gonna take a look at in terms of, of why this works is uh, an example with an angle bar. Um, on this angle bar, I'm going to uh, basically take a section of this and I'm going to heat this uh, with, a, with a V. Um, we're going to call this a, a typical type of heat that you would take for flame straightening. And I'll cover flame straightening uh, in another video. I mentioned it earlier uh, here, but I think for time's sake, it's its best topic left alone. So we're going to go ahead and heat this up. I'm going to get started. So we're going to take our torch and we're going to heat up a small heat in the shape of a V and we will see some growth occur almost immediately. camera that this is bulged up like a pimple okay um, that V heat caused a slight growth up off the table uh, hopefully that will show up in the, uh, the, the, the close-up shot uh, this is actually cooling back down and I'm going to see this shrink back down to near where it was now for the purposes of this demo I'm going to let this cool completely down. So I'm going to kill the cameras. I'm just going to walk away. All right, folks, we are back. Uh, this bar has cooled down. Uh, it's a little, little bit warm, but I can definitely hold my hands on it. Um, what we've got here essentially is uh, very minimal distortion. Um, this bar 
uh, was reasonably straight to begin with. Uh, I did not check it for straightness, but it is essentially shrunk back down uh, to the bench. Um, there might be a slight, slight depression. It might have moved a little bit, but it's again negligible. Um, we're going to clamp this bar down now. So I'm just going to take a C-clamp and move the bar uh, back. I'm simply going to hold the bar uh, so that it cannot rise up where it wanted to. And for the camera's sake, uh, this camera has a view of uh, the well, right end from your perspective, I guess. Uh, I'm simply going to hold the other end down so whatever movement we get uh, occurs on the far end. And we should see that the bar will come off the table. It may not jump off the table. It's not aluminum, okay? Uh, but we're gonna see some growth. And the reason we're gonna see that growth is simply because we are restricting the natural free expansion more than we did before. So while we, we limited length growth, this was allowed to bulge up, all right? And again, we only heated a spot. The aluminum, we heated the entire length of it, so we saw some dramatic growth. Um, and it's steel, so it only expands about half of what aluminum does. But we're going to see what happens here. So the, again, this would simulate a weld nugget on a part that can not move all that much, but yet we have a portion that's free to move. So this isn't restraint as in welding restraint, where we really lock something down and try to prevent as much movement as possible, forcing the weld to stretch okay, upon cooling. Uh, because even though a part of this is restrained, this part is free to move. So we are restricting the upward growth, but we're not restricting that from moving afterwards. Much like the vise prevented the change in length, but it didn't prevent the par from getting shorter. All right, so here we go. We're gonna light this up. We're gonna take the same heat, and then we're just gonna sit back and wait. same temperature as before it's a nice bright orange 1700 degrees ish okay um, it cannot buckle up so here we have it we're already seeing growth on the other end okay just that quickly okay so that is the effect of weld shrinkage so if we were to actually take this angle bar and run weld beads on this outside edge we would expect this to shrink in fact, uh, some countries, probably some businesses within the U.S., uh, they do their straightening by running weld beads. Uh, in Japan, uh, uh, they, they, they do straightening with welding uh, and then grinding. Um, BIW does most of their straightening with uh, torches and water. We actually learned uh, from uh, someone else. I don't know who came in and taught us, but it was a... Uh, Asian shipyard someplace, I don't know if it was Japanese, Taiwanese, whatever, but you know, it was an uh, Asian culture where that was, uh, that training occurred and BW has been doing this now for 40 or 50 years. Uh, but again, that's, that's the effect of weld distortion and that's again why it works. The bar was not allowed to grow up like it did before. We offered some resistance to natural expansion without completely prohibiting growth and this is what happened. So as this continues to cool, uh, we will see that move around a little bit. It will not stay up exactly the height it is, but for the most part right now, as this continues to grow uh, or cool, the deformation we see is, is now permanent. And those are the things you have to keep in mind. All right, so I'm gonna close this video with this final thought. Um, you really have to think about the effect of the welds that you're producing shrinking. The welds get shorter, okay, and they close in volume, okay, so if we run a weld bead uh, on, on a piece of plate, we would expect to see some growth in that plate. 
Um, I'm going to show some flame straightening techniques in another video that will further uh, really expand on this. And we're going to try to undo some of the distortion on the assemblies that we did uh, in the video on the, the uh, uh, weld sequencing. Uh, basically, we did some intermittent fillet welds. Or we did continuous welds with an intermittent pattern. And while we kept the T-bar straight in that video, the faceplate actually bowed up. And we're going to try to undo that using just heat. I, I could do welding as well, but I would have to weld and grind, and I don't like grinding. So we're going to use just an acetylene torch. Um, until then, hopefully you learned something, and have a great day.